Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you're here. I have a really special video today. My name is Shannon and I will be sharing all about how I moved from New York to California when I was 21 years old and how you can make a cross country move as well. I'll be sharing all about what I brought, how I planned, how I saved money, how I found roommates, how I found housing. I will share about all the places I have lived. I've lived in four different areas in California and I'm going to be sharing about each of those. So if that's something you are interested in, then just keep watching. If you've ever visited Los Angeles or have ever seen a map of Los Angeles, you know there are so many different pockets of places and people. So I have lived in four different areas of the city, Koreatown, Sherman Oaks, Culver City, and lastly I'm here in Marina Del Rey. And each place was so different, different kinds of people, different things to do. I'll be sharing about each of those, but I want to start off with when you are wanting to make a cross-country move, what you need to plan for in terms of a budget, how to save money, how to look for roommates, what are you actually going to pack, and what do you need when you get here? So when I was moving out to Los Angeles, I was moving out for grad school. I was 21 years old and I just finished my undergrad program in New York and I knew I wanted to have year-round sun and live by the beach. So my school was starting the end of August and I graduated in May so I actually spent those three months working non-stop. I was actually a nanny for a family out on Long Island in New York and I was making pretty good money. I think average, I'm not sure if it's still average now, but you can make about $20 an hour as a nanny and if your family needs you for date nights or overnights, you can accumulate a lot in that period of time and what is really important is to focus on saving. So in terms of going out to eat, partying, shopping, if you're saving up to move cut a lot of those things out and in your head you can think of it like I'm just going to work a lot and save a lot, not spend a lot of money for three months and see how much you saved. I saved about $10,000 in that period of time which was really comfortable to move out here. I also didn't have any furniture to my name. I didn't have anything for a place to live so I knew I needed some money to move out here. In terms of renting a place, you're going to need deposit which is usually first month's rent and you'll also need first month's rent. So say rent is $1,000 a month, you'll need at least $2,000 a month to put down, so coming right out of your bank account. There is always going to be an application fee when you're looking at apartments. That's usually around $45, but that can change. And when you first move out to Los Angeles, I think it's really amazing to live with roommates. So how the heck do you find roommates? I actually found one of my roommates through an app called Roommates by Roomie, and there's another app called Roomster. There are tons of groups on Facebook as well, so there are many, many ways you can find roommates and then of course verify, check if they'd be a great roommate. Of course, meet them in person. Maybe have someone with you if possible when you're meeting them to make sure everything is safe. But I do think it's really fun to live with roommates. When I first moved out here, I lived with one person. Then I ended up living with three other girls. And then I actually met one of my best friends out here and live with her. And then currently I live with my boyfriend. So living with roommates can be really fun, especially when you're new to a city. Another Another way you can meet roommates is through friends of friends. Put out the word that you're moving, share with your friends and family, see if they know anyone out here. And a lot of times through word of mouth, you might find an opening for housing or another person that's also moving and looking for a roommate. So I definitely recommend living with roommates when you first get out here, not only for the social aspect, but it's pretty expensive to live out here in Los Angeles. So kind of breaking down those costs and dividing it between a few different people will really help when you're first living here. Next, I want to share what to bring to Los Angeles. So if you do have furniture, you're going to want to calculate the cost of transporting it. So getting a moving company and if that cost outweighs what it would be to replace the furniture or of course if you're living with roommates, they might have things like a dining room table or a couch. You're going to want to go through all your expenses. So for me, I didn't have any furniture to my name. I literally shipped out two big boxes of clothes and then packed two suitcases of clothes 
years and that is the only thing I brought. My dad flew out here to meet me and to help me move and to get settled and to put everything together. So my dad and I went to Ikea, got a bunch of stuff, got a desk, a dresser, a bed, couch, staple items like that. He helped me put everything together. And of course, if you do have a family member or a friend who would love to help you move and be there for you for support through that process, I highly recommend it. Having my dad with me when I first moved out here was so special, not only because it's the first time I moved out of the state into a big city and was starting a new chapter of my life, but also for the support. It could be a little overwhelming, so having someone with you can make it a lot easier. So again, you're gonna wanna price everything out in terms of is it worth it to get a moving company to bring it here or should I just buy something new when I'm here? There are furnished places here as well. You can get a place that's furnished. It's going to cost a little bit more in rent, but that's also an option if you're not sure where you wanna live, where you wanna stay. Just bring your clothes or bring a few suitcases. Start somewhere and then you can kind of figure out where you wanna live if you wanna stay here long term. I definitely recommend visiting Los Angeles before you actually move because like I'm going to share in a minute, there are such a variety of places here. You can live at the beach, you can live in Hollywood, you can live in downtown Los Angeles. I didn't know how big Los Angeles was until I literally put in a Google search of Los Angeles County and my jaw basically hit the floor. So definitely if you can, fly out here for a weekend or a week, bring family, bring friends, make it into a vacation, but definitely check out the different areas where you're thinking about moving, but being there will definitely give you a better feel of where you want to live. Okay, now I'm going to go into every single place I've lived in Los Angeles to give you my point of view on what I loved about it, what I didn't, just so you can get an idea of a few of the pockets of Los Angeles. So when I first touched down in Los Angeles, I actually rented my place before I ever saw it. I did have someone that lived here go see it for me and it all checked out and I just rented it because I wanted to have a place when I landed. I didn't want to spend time looking at rentals, which I could have. You could stay in a hotel, look at rentals for a week and find something within a week or two, but I wanted to get going. I had to start grad school in literally two weeks. So I already had this place rented and it was in Koreatown. So the reason I picked this pocket was because it was very close to downtown Los Angeles and that's where my grad school was. I had no idea what to expect, but when I got to Koreatown, it was not the LA I was expecting expecting, but I actually found out it was pretty fun. Places like The Line with their pool parties upstairs or Break Room 86 was a really fun bar, of course, pre-COVID. Places like Korean barbecue opened me up to new ways of eating that was so delicious and it forced me to explore. I fell in love with boba and got a little bit addicted <laughs> when I lived in Koreatown. So I love that it really opened me up to checking out a different kind of culture and new food, new experiences, and it was perfect for what I needed. It was definitely more on the inexpensive side to live there and it was literally two metro stops away from my school. So when I moved here, I didn't have a car. I sold my car in New York and that is how I also got some of the money that I saved up. And when I moved here, I was hoping to rely on public transportation and that is definitely a topic I need to share about. So when you're moving to Los Angeles, you really got to find out if the metro or or the bus system can work for you in terms of public transportation, a lot of the time it might not. From when I moved out here till now, it's been almost six years, they've extended a lot of the metro system. The metro system actually goes out to Santa Monica now, and before it didn't, it goes pretty south now and pretty north, and before it was really not that big but it worked out for me for about the first seven to eight months that I lived here. I would use things like Uber or Lyft to go to the beach or to go explore up to Universal Studios and Hollywood. I wanted to do all the touristy things when I first moved here and I would just use Uber. So if you think about a car payment could be, let's say 200 or $300 a month. If you're gonna be spending money on Uber or the Metro tickets, you're just gonna wanna make sure that what you're spending on public transportation 
education isn't equating to a car payment because in that case, it might just be easier to get a car. And after seven or eight months of using the Metro system and using Ubers, I definitely wanted a car. I wanted to feel that independence, that freedom where I could just drive anywhere. I wanted to start doing road trips like out to the Grand Canyon. That's literally eight hours if you want to go out there or down to San Diego, which is two hours. So places I wouldn't take an Uber to, I finally wanted a car to start exploring more. But know that if you don't have access to getting a car right now, when you first move out here, you can live somewhere and the Metro system can be really helpful for you. If you do get a car, you have definitely heard of this before, but the traffic is a little bit on the crazy side. Things like the 405 freeway or the 10 freeway, they can get a little jammed up. During this past year, it wasn't so bad, but unfortunately traffic levels are back to where they were in 2019 or from what I have seen. And the crazy thing is that there's kind of traffic at all hours of the day. Like you could think that you're being strategic and going out maybe during like lunch or early afternoon to beat the traffic, but there's kind of just always traffic. That and also parking can be really hard. So things like parking structures or valet, you might have to pay when you go to restaurants or different places for parking because street parking can be really hard. Just think about how many people live in Los Angeles County and how many cars there are and you'll definitely understand why parking can be hard. So just remember those two things. For me though, I've had a car now for four years at least and it's been completely worth it. All right, after about eight or nine months of living in Koreatown, I met a group of friends and I moved to Sherman Oaks, which is also called The Valley. I thought it'd be really fun to live with some friends I met and it was. So one thing that was also appealing about Sherman Oaks is that it was actually cheaper to live there. I got like my own master bedroom, my own bathroom for around $1,000 in like a really nice area. It had amenities, it had a gym, and I ended up living there for about three months because I will tell you, in the valley, it is so hot in the summer. I absolutely love the beach and Sherman Oaks was about 30 minutes away from the beach. And if you're going to live that far, you probably can't get there every day. So I would go every weekend, but it was really, really hot there. And just somewhere I didn't see myself living in the long term. So I ended up moving to Culver City with one of my best friends. And I lived there for, I think almost three years. I absolutely love Culver City. I'd recommend it to anyone. So Surrounding areas are like Palms or Cheviot Hills or Mar Vista. And during the time since I've left Culver City, they've actually completed a lot of the construction in their downtown area. And it is so beautiful. There's everything to do there from shops to a movie theater to bars and things to do like going out. It's a beautiful place to go for a run or go out for a walk, hang out with your friends. There's a mall there and it's actually only like 15 or 20 minutes away from Venice Beach and that's where I would go all the time. So every time I moved, I kind of wanted to get closer to the water because that was a big reason why I moved out here was to be next to the ocean, at the beach all the time and Culver City was one of my most favorite places that I lived. So last but definitely not least, actually it's probably number one place that I've loved living is right here in Marina Del Rey. So Marina Del Rey has about seven or eight different basins and then land around it. So you literally live on the water and from our balcony, you can see all the boats. When we go outside for a walk, you can see the water and you're just walking right on the water and something I really love. We have kayaks and a paddle board and we have a dock where we just go out into the water and that is just what I dreamed of every time that I was moving around Los Angeles. This is really what I was envisioning. So I do want to share that Marina Del Rey is not the place to live if you're looking to go out every night or to walk to shops, walk to dining. Places like Santa Monica or Culver City are perfect for those things but in Marina Del Rey you're going to need a car if you want to go to places like Abbot Kinney. So Abikini is a street that is very close and it has lots of shops and dining, but you definitely can't walk there. Where you can walk though is the beach. So when thinking about a place to live in Los Angeles, definitely take into consideration what you want your daily and weekly and weekend life to look like. Where do you want to be able to walk to? What do you want to see every day? What do you want to be surrounded with? All right, that wraps up 
everywhere where I lived in Los Angeles, how exactly I moved from New York to LA and how you can too, what to pack, what to expect, what to bring, what to buy here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching to the end. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and I will get back to you. Until next time, have a great one, you guys.